but to General Motors CEO Mary Barra, who is about to enter the lion's den right now, also known as Capitol Hill. And like most lion's dens, not going to be comfortable. GM's top executives sitting down with members of Congress from Ohio and then later Maryland this afternoon to explain her thinking behind the shuttering of the plants in their states. But tomorrow may be worse for Barra. She has to face lawmakers from General Motors' home state of Michigan. Congressman Dan Kildee will be one of them there. The Michigan Democrat is vice co-chair of the Congressional Auto Caucus and represents the District of Flint. Congressman, welcome. GM says, we've got to close plants in Ohio and Baltimore and then two in Michigan, your state. What are you going to say to her right at the top of the meeting you have with her? Well, we're going to want to know what their plan for the future is for investing in the United States and investing in American workers. I know it was the U.S. government that stepped up when the auto industry was struggling uh, to much controversy um, and, and rescued the auto sector. Uh, and it's been the U.S. government that has been there all along and the U.S. workers, uh, many of the workers, by the way, who made pretty significant sacrifices in order to get the company back on its feet. And to now see the company make this decision, uh, it's just not acceptable. We want to know what GM's plan is for the United States. Knowing that we live in a global economy, if there is going to be expansion of truck production, for example, mm -hmm. build those trucks here in the U.S. Well, l let me just say that as she meets right now with Senators Rob Portman, the Republican from Ohio, and Sherrod Brown, uh, the Democrat from Ohio, they already put out a statement saying, change your decision. Now, that could mean either retooling the closed plants or, or somehow repurposing them, but she's already come out and said that's too expensive. What are you going to say to that? You hold a gun to her head in, in, you know, by pulling some type of uh, incentives that are out there. What is your plan? Forget about hers. Well, it's, it's, I think it's difficult for us by policy uh, to force General Motors to make the decisions that we would like them to make. But I do think it's important that we, we make our, our position clear. Uh, we think the company has a special obligation to the United States government and to the workers in the United States. And we do want them to reverse course. The real question for them is in the short term, while it may make sense to save money by building new factories in places mm -hmm. where wages are really low, in the long term, we don't think that's the right choice. In the long term, it makes more sense to invest here. I'm, and we would ask them to do that. I, I'm glad you just brought up wages. Wages are rising. We have a very tight labor market. And, and I'm thinking, playing devil's advocate, what Mary Barra would say. The time to get your financial balance sheet in order is in good times, such as these. And therefore, laid off workers might be able to find other jobs relatively quickly. Um, I know you just said that you can't really force General Motors to change their ways. You know, it, it is a fine line to strike. Do you really want government telling every business how to run their company? No, we shouldn't tell them how to run their company, but neither should we keep our mouths quiet when the people that we represent are bearing the consequences of a decision that we shouldn't expect to see after we were asked by that very same company not that many years ago to step in and help them when they really needed it. Um, That's the, really the point. How did you find this out? I mean, were you really taken by surprise? Did you not know that sales of the, the Chevy Cruze, the Impala, the Buick LaCrosse were so anemic that all of the plants that make them, including some, some truck transmissions, have to close? How did you find this out? Well, specifically, I found it out through the news media. Uh, I did not get a call from anybody at General Motors. They seem very willing to interact with us on a regular basis when there's something that they obviously need. And I support that. Don't get me wrong. I have a good relationship with these folks generally. Uh, but I was a little irritated uh, with the fact that I had to find out about these uh, plant closings mm -hmm. uh, through the news media. One, uh, last, one last question, and, and we've got to run. But uh, back in the day, in 1979, I know this goes way back, but Lee Iacocca was facing bankruptcy for, Chevro for um, Chrysler, and he cut his salary down to a dollar. Are you going to ask Mary Barra to cut her salary instead of uh, you know, laying off thousands of workers? Well, I don't know if I'll go that far. I will ask them to reverse course and just keep those workers on the job. They, if they invest in the American worker, they will get paid back. That's really the message that I want to deliver to them. Congressman Dan Kildee of Michigan, uh, let us know how it goes. Thank you very we much. Will.